What's up guys, this is Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys our PTL Season 1 Division 3 draft analysis for your Ladner Lantern. Um, Shoutouts to Gray for everything, honestly. Uh, just being invited to the league is fantastic, as well as all of the cool graphic stuff. Uh, you guys will see when we get into the slides, these are the draft stream slides just for my team. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to personally catch the draft stream. It was a little bit too early uh, in the day today. I was working um, when they were doing the draft stream, and it ended up ending right at the end of my work shift, uh, which really sucked. I'm hoping there's going to be a VOD so I can watch it, and if there is a VOD, I will try to remember to leave it <laughs> in the description. Uh, we'll see if I can manage to do that, but there you go. Um, so if you guys don't know about the PTL, um, or you don't know about any NSTL, sorry. Uh, NSTL is a league that was started by Gray and a bunch of former PPL, or sorry, not former. I guess they're still current PPL coaches. I'm sorry, I actually don't follow the PPL. I just know that Mono was part of the, P, uh, the PPL for a while. Um, it's a points-based league, points-based Wi-Fi league, and so this is sort of taking the idea from that. Um, the battles are at level 50 on Showdown, though, or on Wi-Fi if you want. Um, yeah, and so the N N NSTL started like that, and then we ended up moving into the PTL, which is, I, I wasn't part of NSTL, so I don't know why I'm saying we, but uh, PTL stands for the Pokemon Tri-League. There are three divisions, and we all meet at the end for playoffs. There's a lot of Division One teams that make playoffs, and then you can um, promote through Division Three upwards, and I'll, I'll sort of talk about that. I'm, I'm going to start off the video just talking about the rules before we get into my draft. Um, so to start off with some bans, there were, uh, all any Uber was banned. Um, unless they were voted to be unbanned, Tapu Lele was banned, Protean and Battle Bond Greninja were banned, and Magerna was banned. Um, so there were a few Ubers, in quotations, that were allowed, those being uh, Aegislash and Landers Incarnate. Um, and Landers Incarnate being allowed to use the Sheer Force ability. Uh, a few items banned that I've actually never seen before, just to take some more RNG out of the game. Um, the only one out of these that I've seen before banned is Bright Powder. But King's Rock being banned, Focus Band being banned, and Quick Claw being banned are kind of nifty. Um, Quick Claw, I'm not entirely sure I understand, but again, uh, just to take the randomness out of it is, is the is the logic behind it. There are a bunch of moves that are banned. They're all like um, RNG based. Uh, I'm actually really happy to see Chatter banned because I just absolutely despise that move after that Waylord match. Few Z Crystals banned. Comonium Z, EVM Z, and Munium Z are all banned. Um, Omni Boost is also banned, worthy to note. You cannot pass speed plus other stats, but you can speed pass, and there's no chain baton passing. Um, they ban Sandville and Snowcloak for evasion stuff, banned Cute Charm, banned Moody. Um, yeah, uh, where are we now? Points, Mega Evolution Z users, trades for agents, battles, uploading. Okay, so I guess I'll just sort of talk about the points then. Uh, we had a 130 point limit. We were required to take a minimum of 10 mons and a maximum of 12. Uh, and we were forced to take a Mega Evolution as well. So uh, pretty crazy considering the point values of most of this stuff. I actually thought 130 points was going to be hard to spend on 12 mons generally. Uh, but it ended up being reasonably easy to spend. Um, spoiler, spoiler alert, I went right in the middle and took 11. Uh, I hate prepping with 12 mons and I hate prepping for 12 mons. It's dumb. 12 mons is stupid. Um, it's just one extra aspect that makes you rethink your the entire way you prep and I just dislike it wholeheartedly. Uh, that was probably my least favorite part about AABL uh, was the 12 mons, but there you go. Um, uh, yeah, so I was actually announced on Twitter, and maybe I can pull that up, because uh, I was announced as a coach a long time ago, and we actually drafted a long time ago, but I wasn't allowed to reveal any of this. Um, so if you're in my front office, you're not supposed to know about uh, what I drafted. Uh, <laughs> so let me uh, let me just look this up, because I'm super unprofessional, and obviously... Um, where would it be? Oh, I'm way at the beginning. I'm pretty sure I was the first coach announced, because uh, we started with D3 in the announcements on Twitter. And so I might have been like the second tweet. Yeah, I was the second tweet ever. Um, so I was actually announced on July the 9th, and I'm filming this on August the 10th. So I've been announced for about a month now that I was going to participate in PTL. Um, it is upload preferred, not upload required, but I'm going to try and upload as many as I can, uh, which means I'm, I'm going to upload. That's essentially what it means. You guys know me. Uh, the only 
season that I stopped uploading in the middle. Sorry, there's two that I stopped uploading in the middle of. UPBA season two, that's because the league ended. Uh, and LET season one, and that was because I was just getting really behind on it. Uh, and I ended up not following through with uh, the end of that season. Well, I did follow through with the end of that season. I'm still part of LET, and you guys are actually probably going to see me upload LET season three. Because we have recording capabilities back for every team again. But um, it, it just sucked. Like, TJ was doing too much by himself, and it, it ended up uh, hurting what I was trying to do with it. And that's no offense to TJ or anything like that, right? Like, I love... Uh, TJ's a great guy, but um, he, he was trying to take on too much. And it ended up um, uh, causing people to have unrealistic expectations of the timeline in which he could do those. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, we're not here to talk about LAT. We're here to talk about PTL. 130 points, all that good stuff. I was... 11th pick in the draft and let me just verify that by actually looking at the doc i'm pretty sure i was 11th out of 16 yeah i was 11 out of 16 um i didn't have a super duper plan coming into this i had a few things i wanted to try right um i had a defensive core that i wanted to try out because i thought it would be really nasty and uh, i had a few things in mind that i wanted to pick as well potentially just because there's some broken stuff here that you don't necessarily get to see in other leagues uh, so if Aegislash somehow made it to me, I wanted Aegislash, but it it, it didn't. Aegislash went first overall. Uh, I've never used Mega Latios before. I was looking at that. It went second overall. Uh, Mega Mawile, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I was willing to try it. It went fourth overall. Um, yeah, and then Zero Aura went round one, which I don't agree with. Uh, Kieran Black went eighth overall before what I picked. I, again, I don't agree with it. Mega Kangaskhan is really not good without Power Up Punch and Seismic Toss. Uh, and I don't agree with it going before my pick either. Uh, Meg Kanescon went one before me, and I was just blown away. Um, but yeah, so I ended up taking Mega Latios, and this is a big shout out to the guys for creating these slides. Uh, really cool, nifty, <laughs> nifty uh, draft slides here. It's got my little Twitter Twitter banner and my Twitter icon uh, down there, and how much of my point budget I have left my logo up in the top and then that's the PTL division 3 logo up on the left there so we ended up taking Mega Latios first um, obviously guys if you've been following me since the beginning then you know that I've used Mega Latios before we uh, we used Air Canada in LET season 1 my boy Air Canada went 17 and 3 in that league absolutely demolished people uh, and it was just a joy to use honestly Mega Latios is just so much fun uh, I enjoyed every second of using Mega Latios I have no regrets of drafting that thing um, it, it was absolutely busted on that team because I had Megarna and then Megalodios gave me free points for some reason, but it, it's that's besides the point. LET Season 1 was just broken. Um, yeah, so this is a comfort pick. I mean, that's the whole reason that I picked it. Is it was comfort. Um, there were two other things I was looking at uh, looking at taking, and they were both of the Lando forms, just because I'd never used Landorus before in draft, and I was... The way the draft had been going, I actually did think that at least one of them would make it back to me in round two. Um, and spoiler alert, neither of them did. They both went in round one actually after me. Um, Lando I went one pick after me at 12th, and Lando T went at 14th. Um, so, you know, that kind of sucks a little bit, but it ended up freeing up my draft quite a bit, which I'm happy about. Um, it would have just stockpiled my ice weakness if I had a Lando plus uh, Mega Latios anyways. Uh, so we pick up a great offensive Mon, our Dragon type, and our required Mega right on the first uh, right on the first pick. Pick up a uh, nice offensive Psychic, which I always think is really important in draft. Great setup option on both sides, Calm Mind or Dragon Ants. Uh, really cool. I'm not entirely sure if it gets a work up now that I'm talking about it, but it might get work up as well, which is actually like a really cool nifty idea for a mix set. It probably doesn't because someone would have thought of that already, uh, but there you go. Um, yeah, that's Mega Latios, really. I mean, it's just a great mixed attacker potentially. It's just got fantastic offenses, R solid 110 base speed, and has removal as well, which is kind of what you're looking for. Uh, round two, I ended up taking another comfort pick here. Uh, came back to me pretty quickly, and I had my eyes on this just because I loved this thing in D&D. &D. Uh, and if you guys remember my D&D &D team, then you might already know what I picked. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot great that went before this on the way back around anyways, except maybe Clefable. I mean, I wasn't really eyeing Clefable, but it did go one pick before me. Um, but yeah, again, I really just wasn't eyeing Clefable necessarily, because uh, I had other plans in mind for my fairy. But I do end up picking up Zapdos... Ya boy, Hawkeye, and I just realized the slide is a little bit taller than it should be, uh, and so that's my bad there. 
Um, I, I can't fix that in OBS. That's a that's a problem that I had by not centering the slide properly when I was uploading it to Google Slides. But yeah, we got Zapdos again. <laughs> this thing was a defensive monster in D and D for us. It has been. Uh, it's likely going to win defensive MVP and best gloom on in NCL. And you guys will see that uh, coming up in week 12. Um, <sighs> Zapdos is great. I love Zapdos, honestly. Uh, there ain't no paral if there ain't no paralysis like a paralysis party, and a paralysis party don't stop. You know, uh, static plus discharge, basically 60% chance of paralyzing things. Uh, more removal is great. I mean, again, it's another comfort pick. Um, starting off Volt Turn with bulky offense already with Zapdos plus Latios. I mean, Zapdos' offense is nothing to scoff at. Nice base 100 speed tier. Uh, pretty decent upper echelons of speed going on there. Uh, two ground immunities, which is really cool. Uh, and like I said, I was eyeing Lando I and Lando T, but both got taken on the wheel back around. Uh, round three, it took me a while to get the pick back, and I actually think it took a couple of days for this one. We took a really long time to draft, uh, and we actually had to speed it up at the end because Polly, um, Polly Mac needed to draft before he moved to Australia. So uh, that is sort of how this went. On the way back, I didn't necessarily see anything that got sniped for me, necessarily, uh, all along the way back. Like, there was nothing I was really had my eye on um, after After that. Excuse me. Uh, worthy to note that Halucha got taken one pick before the guy with Tapu Koko could have taken it. Uh, I actually think that's really funny. And then that dude, uh, that dude ended up taking Tapu Fini afterwards. Yeah, to I mean, Tokyo's Latias, uh, obviously, like wasn't really looking at it because I already had Latios. Um, uh, really just not seeing much. Oh, Tangrowth is something I had my eyes on. I wanted Tangrowth as part of my defensive core, but we ended up going with more offense and another returner from LET Season 1. Bringing back Mammoth Wine or Logan. We're bringing Logan back. Uh, yeah, I mean, this team just looks so scary, doesn't it? Like, what switches into a Dragon type move? Besides a fairy, like fairies still kind of do okay against this team, but like steals resist dragon, right? That's the main thing. Okay, and Mamoswine just obliterates steals <laughs> with earthquake. Um, and the steals, the steel flying types that can immune themselves to earthquake, as in Celesteel and Skarmory, uh, get bought by Zapdos. So the only exception right now is Clefki with Magnet Rise, and that's like very specific tech against the three mons that I have going on right now. Um, powerful ground nice stab is just amazing. I, I love Mammoth Swine. Just in theory, Mammoth Swine is so good. Uh, and I just had some talking points here, but I, I talked about why Zapdos complements Mammoth Swine quite nicely there. Um, I've got an electric community now, and both of my other mons cover Mammoth Swine's grass weakness at the moment. Um, I'm lacking an ice resist is the main thing that I'm seeing right now, but it, I mean, I'm only three mons deep into an 11 mon draft. Um, I don't have anything to cover the water either necessarily. I don't want to be switching. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. I don't want to be switching in Mega Latios on water attacks. Like, just because it's got recovery doesn't mean it can switch in on every offensive mon in the book. Um, yeah, uh, Stealth Rocks. Big, big, big point there. Uh, picking up a Stealth Rocker is really big. Um, n next pick, I'm actually going to take another LET Season 1 mon, and you'll notice this team is remarkably similar to my LET Season 1 team. I think I end up picking a lot of the. I want to say at least six of my 11 mons are from that team. So, yeah, it's going to look a lot similar to that. And that team is comfort to a T. I went 12-3 and three in that regular season uh, and made it to the semifinals and lost to Baton Pass shenanigans. So, um, yeah, by all means, I I, uh, I think that I could call that a successful season with that, with that team. Round four, we took the absolute comfort. Uh, it, yeah, you guys will know that this is like the most comfort pick for me ever in Mimikyu. Uh, and I've grabbed three 16 point mons in a row. So my budget has dwindled significantly at this point. Uh, worthy to note as we continue down the draft that I'm gonna have to start picking up some lower tier things, start figuring out what I wanna do with my more budget mons in this draft. But uh, Mimikyu is just, yeah. <laughs> I have 62 kills in 33 games with this total, uh, not including my tournament matches where I have six kills in 10 games in tournament matches. So 
uh, yeah, Mimikyu is just absolutely fantastic with me. Ghost Spam is ridiculous, and this gives me a fairy to cover Megalodios' Dragon Weakness at the moment. Uh, I don't have a Steel Switch. Well, sorry, I do have a Steel Switch in. Zapdos resists Steel for the Mammoth Swine and the Mimikyu at the moment. Um, I just don't really have a Ghost Switch in yet. I'm, I think I, I, do, I do pick up a Ghost Switch in, I do. Uh, but at the moment, I don't have a Ghost Switch in. So, um, yeah, Mimikyu, again, it's just, yeah. Like, it's another setup threat along with Megalodios. Um, that's pretty worthy to note. My Volt Turn is sort of stumbled a little bit with Zapdos being the only one there. And I'm fairly physically biased at the moment as well, but we'll see that it moves on. Uh, round five, I ended up taking Registeel, another familiar Mon. Registeel was on our UPBA Season 1 Championship team. 10 point Registeel, I actually thought was kind of a steal. Uh, Registeel is like one of the better tier 4 Mons, and so 10 point, uh, maybe, maybe 10 points is actually probably about fair for it, but um, I, I value Registeel fairly highly as a bulky steel type, and I think it's more important to have a bulky steel than an offensive steel. Especially with an offensive dragon on your team, uh, because you want to be eating those fairy hits that the offensive dragon can't take. So, um, I mean, Megalodios cannot really take fairy hits very well, so Red Steel is going to come in and eat those. Uh, it's probably going to be my primary stealth rocker, so Mamoswine now moves to a secondary rocker, which is really good. Bulky Steel, like I said, uh, it's. Mm, I don't know, it's just bulky. Excuse me, playing around with my speed tiers right now, I've got a 50, an 80, a 96, and a 100, and 110. Uh, it's worthy to note, I was going to take Nihiligo in about two rounds. I thought Nihiligo would sort of round up my draft quite nicely uh, with the plan that I had going on. Um, just because I thought that a rock and poison type with T-Spikes and Stealth Rocks would be really clutch on this team. And it actually got taken this round. <laughs> a few picks ahead of me, actually. Um... About four or five picks ahead of my Registeel pick, Nihiligo got taken already. And I didn't think people were going to be eyeing it that much, actually, considering it was 15 points. I thought that was maybe a little bit too pricey for what someone would pay for a Nihiligo um, at this point. And I was sort of budgeting around taking Nihiligo, but we sort of like turned on a pivot and uh, maneuvered around that quite well at the end of the draft, I think. Round six, this is our first new Mon to the team. I ended up grabbing Sloking. Uh, the movie is what Sloking is going to be called for Pokemon the Movie 2000. Um, I didn't really necessarily touch on nicknames for my returning mons. They're all going to say the same. Air Canada, Hawkeye, Logan, Sean, and Thick. Uh, and then continuing on, I've got one, two, three. Three more returners coming up in the next three rounds. And they're all going to have the same nicknames as well. And I'll touch on them when we get to that. Um, so yeah, Slowkong. Slowking. Slow Kong, Slow Kong. Yeah, Slow Kong, Slow Kong. Sloking is part of the defensive core I wanted to build. I wanted to build Tangrowth plus Sloking. I thought it would be a nasty regen core. Uh, it freed up Tangrowth to not be as specially defensive with an Assault Vest every week because Sloking fills the specially defensive role. And so I could have used Tangrowth as a physically defensive grass type, which, I mean... Eh. So the thing is that like Mammoth Swines doesn't give a crap about Tangrowth, but if I had Tangrowth on my own team, then I wouldn't have to worry about that. And Tangrowth's like the best Zagard check in the entire game. Um, I, I'm kind of lacking Thousand Arrow switch ins at the end of the draft, but like not really at the same time. And I have a lot of stuff that outspeeds it naturally. Things like Megalodios can just drop a Draco on it, you know. Uh, things like Zapdos, just like HP Ice, you know. <laughs> uh, Mamoswine with Ice Shard, Mimikyu's got Disguise up. So I've got a lot of checks to something like a Zygarde anyways. Um, but yeah, Sloking... <sighs> I, it's a special wall. I mean, a bulky water is really good. I, I'm not a huge fan of the extra psychic typing, but there's so many psychic types that I've wanted to draft in league format that you kind of just have to double up on them sometimes. I'm not a huge fan of me being so knockoff weak and shadow ball weak though either, and we'll sort of have to patch that up. Again, we only have 41 points to make a minimum of four more picks, so I can average about 10 points a pick, and that's about upper echelon of tier four, which is okay. Uh, like we saw with Registeel there. I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to take some more expensive stuff and then take some more cheaper stuff because uh, I think that I can afford it uh, and I think that it helps the team out a little bit better. Um, this is the start of a regen core. Where the, I, I do have a regen core going on in this team and I think Sloking makes a really... It, it's the bulkier of my regen mons, if that makes any sense. Um, I was eyeing Torn T as well in this draft and it got taken before I could take it. Uh, so there you go. Round seven, we take another returner. Uh, this mom we've drafted uh, four times now, three or three or four times now. 
Uh, and I, it seems like I always have a Rotom form on every team. But here we go. We got Rotom Heat. Bring back the Dyrus. 13 points, just like Slowking was. Uh, an Electric type. I wasn't really trying to double up on the Electric, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I was really trying to get a Fire type, and specifically a Bulky Fire is really helpful. Uh, while it does only get the one Fire type move in Overheat, it's still fairly useful as a defensive Fire type, which I think is pretty useful. Uh, I've got a lot of Grass checks for my Slowking and my Mammoth one at the moment. And Grass tends to be the most resisted type in a draft anyways, so does Bug, but a nice Bug resist for Mega Latios is actually really useful. Uh, something else that Registeel can switch in on. Actually, Registeel covers Mega Latios really well defensively. Um, I, I like the pairing between the two of them. I ended up having Megarna in my first season with Mega Latios, and they didn't pair up super well, just because they were both offensive threats. Heard me. Um, yeah, so I've got a regen core. And I've got full turn with a regen core. So it's going to be a lot of switching, I think. And that's going to be helped out by more Volturn. So we got another Volt Switcher with Rotom Heat. It's a big thing. Um, more Defog, which is kind of cool because I have Defogger in Latios, Zapdos, and Rotom Heat now. Uh, not fantastic, but I don't have any Spikers. I don't think at all on the team at all. Uh, I don't have... Any, yeah, I didn't draft a Spiker. So, or a T-Spiker. So I don't really care about Defogging away my own rocks most of the time. Uh, it's, it's not the biggest deal. Um, I do grab more removal later on, but for now, this is uh, actually this is the last defogger on the team. Uh, round eight, we bring another mainstay from LUT season one again, uh, and that is Chang the Man Chow. Another 13 point mon, so I only have 15 points to work with for one more mon. Min no, two more mons minimum. And I'm actually going to be getting three mons for this price because I want 11. Uh, but 15 points at this stage was really not a lot, especially with two mons left. I have to grab like a 7-point mon and an 8-point mon, and I just chose to break it up a little bit better than that. <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry. Nian Xiao, really cool. Part of the regen core. U-Turner for the Volt Turn. Fast Fighting type covers a nice speed tier there for me. So Rotom Heat actually uh, covers a speed tier in between Mamoswine and Mimikyu as well, which I think is important. Slow King's at the bottom end of my speed right now, but uh, I think I've adjusted my speed tiers accordingly. I've got a lot of really good type synergies and uh, a really strong Volt Turn with Regen Core going on. Um, so I like that a lot. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about Mian Xiao, honestly. Uh, it can break the dark types that Megalodios doesn't like, so it's part of my Psychic Dark Fighting Core. Uh, I mean, it's a Tertiary Core, but there you go. That's what it's there for. Tangela is next. Uh, Tangled to come back, another LET Season 1 Mon, and that's the last of the LET Season 1 Mons. So, uh, to round out our LET Season 1 roster, <laughs> we've got, we're bringing back Megalodios, Mamoswine, Mimikyu, Rotom Heat, Mianisho, and Tangela, all from that team. So, 6 of the 11 from that roster is pretty good. And honestly, I was trying to imitate that team a lot because it has been the most successful or the second most successful team that I've ever had. Uh, and what's funny is that season was 15 weeks. This season is also 15 weeks. We play all of our opponents. Uh, I forgot the Tangle was 5 points. I thought it was cheaper than that. But uh, amazing, a Violet user. Really bulky grass type. I mean, it's basically Tangrowth, but it's a mini, mini form. Uh, it's actually got a really decent special attack stat. Don't sleep on Tangle's special attack. It ended up getting a few kills in LET Season 1, and I picked it up as a free agent, I think, um, after I dropped Delmize in that league. So... You know, Tangla is going to fit this team really well. I mean, it's the third part of my regen core. Um, it's pretty budget. It's budget. Uh, honestly, it's budget. That's that's really all there is to it. Round 10, I ended up grabbing a new Mon. And round 11, I grab a new Mon as well. I've never used before. So we have three new Mons. Zapdos from D&D, Registeel from UPBA, and six Mons from LET. Uh, Armaldo, Drumheller, because it's, you know, it's a fossil. And Drumheller's and it's, it's close to Calgary. Uh, shout out to Shade. And the Calgary Talon Flames, my boy. Uh, I haven't actually talked to him a whole lot in in the last couple of days, in particular. But a whole lot overall. But uh, I think we're starting to become pretty good friends. That's sort of off-topic. But uh, I, I like to talk about personal relationships sometimes as well. So, yeah. Armaldo gives me a rock and a bug type. Two types I didn't have before. Another Stealth Rocker, which is really good to help out Registeel. Means I don't have to bring Registeel to every single game. Or it means I don't have to bring Rocks on Armaldo or Rocks on Mamoswine. I probably don't have to bring Rocks on Mamoswine ever uh, with Armaldo and Registeel in the back. Having three Stealth Rockers is really useful. Getting a Spinner is going to take the pressure off of Rotom Heat and Zapdos. Um, potentially. I mean, Armaldo is a very slow Pokemon. I think it's base 45. Let me just check my prep doc real quick. 
it, yeah, it's base 45. So, I mean, it's not going to be winning any awards for speed necessarily. Uh, it does get swift swim. So if I'm against a rain team, cough, cough, I think there's at least one rain team. There might be two. I mean, I'm actually just going to scroll through these really quickly to see where the rain teams are. Uh, where are you? Where are you at? There's a stall team. <laughs> uh, rain. Rain, rain, go away. Coming in another day. No, I don't know. There's a team with Golduck. Oh, yeah, there it is. Sorry. Golduck, Kabutops, Politoed, And then I think there's a team with Pelipper, Kingdra. Somewhere. I don't remember where I passed that team. Is it over here? Over here? Over here? Over here? Yeah, there it is. I did pass it. Sorry. It's Pelipper, Kingdra, and then Kabutops, Golduck, and uh, and Politoed. So they're, they're really budget rain teams this season, but um, worthwhile to note that, you know, I could potentially bring Swift Swim against them. It's an option for sure. Uh, yeah, Armaldo, budget budget pick. I mean, that's all there is to say. Uh, it, no, actually, I had one more point. It, it's actually got a really good attack stat, and I think people sort of downplay that. We've seen it a little bit in NCL with Dom using Armaldo. I think he's been really comfortable in using Armaldo well. Um, I know Ben talked about his Armaldo having like 14 kills in one season or some weird anomaly of a number. But Armaldo is pretty... It's a pretty cookie cutter mon you know like it's gonna do one thing and that's what it's gonna do but it's decent at that so last but not least our last pick and i know i've been going on for so long how many how long is this already actually it's only 26 minutes this is relatively short for, for my draft slash season recap videos um let's just admire the slide a little bit i mean I, okay so we'll talk about six points then and maybe i'll talk about the the thoughts that I had going into six points. So uh, I actually got sniped on Smeargle. I wanted to try Smeargle for this, and I ended up getting Smeargle in a different draft afterwards to try it out. But I had a few thoughts going into this. So I really needed a dark type. I 100% needed a dark type because ghost spam and knockoff spam obliterate my team right now. My only resist is Mian Xiao at the moment, and Mian Xiao doesn't want to lose his item. So like, what am I doing with my life? And I still don't have a ghost resist. There's no ghost resist on this team. So I needed a dark type. I didn't really want life hard. That was like the first option. Uh, I could have gone Smeargle, and I was gonna go Smeargle because um, while I would still be weak to knockoff, I had a Shadow Ball switch in then, and it gave me webs on this team, which I think was relatively useful. Considering my speed tiers, Megalodios is my fastest, and it will remain my fastest. I don't take anything faster than Megalodios, and I actually don't think in the six point range that there is anything faster than Megalodios. Um, if I wasn't gonna get Armaldo, I would definitely have my eye on Glyspot. Glyspot is a monster, as we've seen in LET Season 2. You guys won't have seen that, because I didn't upload any of that, but Glyspot is a beast in that. Uh, or it was a beast in that. Um, where did Glyspot go? Uh, sorry, Glyspot went this round, which I can highlight and come back over to. Round 8, Glyspot went at 6 points. And, yeah, I kind of wanted it. I'm not going to lie. I did really want Glyspot, but I settled for Armaldo, because I didn't have another choice. Uh... But yeah, our last mon is actually going to be a new mon as well. Drake, the Scrafty. Uh, I named it Drake because we're going to use the shiny form. And the shiny form kind of looks like Drake from that meme where he, like, I mean, it's not one meme. It's many memes. But he's, like, got his hand up and he's like, nah. And then he's like, yeah. And then you just, like, insert the words. But there you go. Um, yeah, Scrafty is really cool. I like Scrafty. It's just... It, uh, I don't know, like, in th theory, in theory, I was like, this is a great mon, I, and then I was like, oh, shit, I have two fighting types now, but, you know, the, the dark typing really helps it a lot, and I, I don't really care about it being four times weak to fairy, I've got Rotom Heat to resist fairy and Registeel to resist fairy at the moment, both of which are pretty reliable fairy switch-ins, to be honest, um, I think in practice, Scrafty's gonna look a lot better than it does on this team on paper, uh, just looking through the move pool this thing has, it's like pretty ridiculous. It gets, you know, double dance options with bulk up and dragon dance. I mean, it's definitely not a special attacker by any means, right? But, you know, it's a decent utility mod with like intimidate taunt shenanigans. Like, I actually think Scrafty is a really solid six point mon, and I'm extremely happy to have it on the team. I would probably draft Scrafty in a heartbeat another time because i've seen how good this thing can actually be like i think scrafty's gonna be really solid that's that's basically what i'm saying uh i know people may undervalue scrafty and again i didn't see d's uh draft stream i did send him all the notes that i'm talking about now so um he might have talked about 
my point he might not have I, I don't know that that was up to him it was again it was his option i sent him the notes saying use these if you'd like and so there we go uh yeah it's really versatile so that that's pretty much all i have to talk about the team i mean glaring weaknesses i don't know if it has any necessarily uh knockoff i guess is kind of a big one i only have a couple knockoff switch-ins and like they both don't really want to lose their item um i'm just pulling up my draft plans thing real quick to see the typings so i'm missing normal and poison types normal would be great for ghost spam but now i've scrapped you to switch into those missing a poison type is probably gonna suck uh, the thing is t spikes aren't great against me and i'll tell you why i have two levitators and a flying type and they all get defog uh which is why i don't care about that and i've got a regen core and so like while t spikes might hurt a regen core in the long run the way that i'm built my team is that my regen core isn't going to stay in all the time right away if that makes sense like the regen core isn't just going to sit there the whole time it's going to switch out get health back and then i can u-turn and volt switch back into it um when i threaten stuff out with like me and shell rotom heat so that's the whole basis of the team and so now we had z users and we had 30 points for z users and we could choose a maximum of five and so i ended up using three z users because i had one particular mon in mind i don't know if anyone used did anyone use five no nobody used five the most anyone used was four and that was the St. James Slowbro. Slowbros, sorry. Uh, and the only team not to declare their Z users is Dave, my week one opponent, hilariously enough. Uh, I've actually been trying to contact him for a while, and I'm just going to vent a little bit about this because I know Dave. I've played, um, I think I've played Dave before. Uh, I might not have played him before, but he was part of LET Season 2. He took over team in LET Season 2. And so I'm a little bit salty that he hasn't replied to me. Um, so I'm, I'm actually expecting him to be seriously injured or something which sounds really nasty to say right but like he hasn't replied to me since i've been trying to message him for a long time um like basically after we were done drafting i was trying to get his logo so i could film my team builder and his z users so i could start prepping for him so i haven't started prepping for him yet but don't worry um you guys are actually going to see this on the 17th i think of june not June. Oh my god, it's August. I, I'm blind and I can't read the number on my other monitor. Um, yeah, you guys are going to see this on the 17th of June. Those are Fridays are my upload days. Uh, so you should be able to see team builders on Thursdays and battles on Fridays, I think. Let me just check the rules document again. I, I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I'm just going to double check. Uh, yeah, so how are you guys doing? If you've made it this far in the video and you're itching to see what my Z users are, uh, maybe you can make some predictions about my Z users in the comments. Um, only if you haven't seen my draft, <laughs> please do that. Because uh, if you have, then you know what they are. And if you're part of Division 3 or you're an admin for Division 3, then also please don't guess because you know as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe actually, maybe a better question is, now that you've seen my entire draft, what is your prediction about how I'm going to finish this season. Do you think I'm going to end in a promotion spot? Uh, do you think I'm going to end in a playoffs, playoff slash promotion spot? Or do you think that I'm going to stay in D3 this season? Or for next season? Um, that's sort of what we've got going on there. Uh, damn. This is not in the rules. I, I don't know what day upload for team builders is supposed to go up. I'm... Oh, day before your respective upload day. Okay, yeah. And my upload day is Friday. So Team Builders on Thursdays, Battles on Fridays. Um, it's really strange. Uh, it, it's just sort of like throwing a wrench into my plans for scheduling and stuff like that. But um, basically, upload for this draft recap is going up on August 17th. First battle will be up on the 24th. Whether or not I play Dave, excuse me, because whether or not he's alive is a different question. Um... But yeah, let's get into the Z users. I've been leaving you guys hanging. The Z user I had most in mind was, of course, Mimikyu. Uh, Mimikyu has been an absolute monster of a Z user in the past, and it took up a lot of points. Um, so I couldn't run anything else that was worthwhile for, for Z moves after taking Mimikyu as my first Z user. Uh, the only thing I might have considered was like Mianxiao, 
And I thought about it, and I was like, I'm never going to run Z on Mian Xiao. There's no reason for that. Uh, and then I thought about Rotom Heat, and I was like, well, there's probably never going to be a situation where I run Z Rotom Heat on this team either. So we're just going to go with the two budget mons. Uh, and I actually ended up not going with Tangela with this. So I could have only chosen two of the mons, and Tangela is going to run a Violate. So um, I picked Armaldo and Scrafty. And the only reason for that is because they're low points. And Scrafty is actually going to be an amazing Z user just because of all the coverage it gets. It's actually going to be really crazy Z user if I can pull it off. Um, and Z Scrafty gives me the best knockoff switch in, in the entire game. I'm going to 100% stand by that. Intimidate Z Scrafty is the best knockoff switch in in the entire game. It four times resists knockoff. It's uh, half power because it's Z and Intimidate is minus one attack. I firmly believe that that is correct. Uh, and if I'm wrong, then I will apologize, of course, but I don't think that I'm wrong. Uh, Armaldo Z is, you know, it's probably not going to happen, but it would be cool if it actually does come to a game. It might come to one game, might come to one game. I mean, I said that about a Selgor in LEC Season 1, right? I was like, ah, Selgor's not really going to run a Z move, and then it got a kill on a Whimsicott. So, you know, uh, stuff happens sometimes. So, um, anyways, that's going to be it for my draft recap for PTL or the Pokemon Tri-League. I've rambled on way too much at the end here. So if you guys have made it, leave a comment or add on to your original comment about your prediction of my season and use daffodil as the keyword for this video. Uh, that's going to be for me, guys, and I will see you guys for our week one team builder.